Bring in Thomas Hay, Chairman and Managing Member of Great L Capital. Thomas, thank you for joining. Thanks for having me, Anne. So let, let's break down futures movement right now. Mixed up to job data showed rising unemployment, but continued strength in job additions. So help us understand that conundrum. We've got you know stronger job additions, rising unemployment. How do you how do you reconcile those two statements? Well, it's the number of people counted. And I think the headline number is much less important than the average hourly earnings, which came in lower than expected at 4.6% year on year uh, relative to 4.7% expectations. And then the uh, month on month was uh, two tenths of 1% versus three tenths of 1% expectations. So that's a big deal. Uh, seeing the unemployment rate go up, the Fed is, is kind of uh, doing their job. They want to destroy jobs in order to slow down the economy. But I think the most important development of this weekend is this Silicon Valley Bank. And with that uh, bond portfolio hit that they took, I think what it's done is uh, woken up the Fed that many regional banks have this exposure in this bond portfolio. And I think effectively the good news about Silicon Valley Bank is that it's taken 50 basis points off the table. And I think that's quite a certainty. And the reason that we have that confidence in that assertion is because if you look at every single time we had bond yield spikes, something broke and then uh, the authorities intervened. Going back to last June, when you had the periphery bonds in the EU uh, start to blow out, you saw Lagarde come out with the basically quantitative easing, a, a facility to purchase periphery bonds, and it contained the problem. Then in September, yields, 10-year uh, yield spiked all the way up to 4.3%, and you saw the yen collapse, and the Bank of Japan stepped in to stabilize the market. And then finally in October, yields spiked back up on the 10-year yield over 4%. FTX blew up. And then just now, uh, we had yields spike up last Thursday. And sure enough, this week, uh, Silicon Valley Bank uh, uh, comes into these problems. Tom, I'm going to push you a bit on that. I mean, to say the yield spiked up and then FTX collapsed, you know, FTX was a case of fraud. Well, there's no question there was a case of fraud. So but, then let's talk about this. Yeah. Let's, you know, Tom, you've made the assertion that this is the, the Fed has woken up as a result of SVB. We don't know that yet. You know, just to just to fact, fact check this for the community, the Fed has made no statement with respect to Silicon Valley Bank quite yet. But I think the point you're making, Tom, is that with rates going up quickly, there are consequences that are yet to be determined. Let's talk a little bit of the drivers of that. Let's talk about February inflation data, which is going to be released, Tom, later next week. What are your expectations for the CPI? Well, I think, uh, you know, we're, we're going to have to see. I mean, he made an important statement this week where he basically asserted that housing, wages and goods inflation are all coming down quite a bit. The, the problem that he's faced is the services have been sticky. Uh, so we, we will see. But the most important thing he said was that new leases are coming in a lot lower than existing leases. And that's been the base case for the Bulls thesis that in May, June, and July, as those leases, old leases rolled off, we would see a collapse in CPI due to the fact uh, that the weighting of owner's equivalent rent in the CPI is such a significant weight. So uh, I think that uh, we may start to see indications, maybe he was foreshadowing that, but we have to wait for the number. It's, it's that simple. I mean, services is still very strong. And you saw it in the jobs report this morning with all the hiring and leisure and hospitality. Let's talk a, a little bit uh, more about the, the impact on the rate hikes on banks, Tom, because, you know, one thing that Silicon Valley Bank has that's distinct from the other banks out there, the whole sector, in the red last night in after hours uh, trading and this morning, Silicon Valley has disproportionate exposure to tech relative to the other banks. So let's talk about, and particularly earlier stage tech. Is this a moment of reckoning for the venture activity that we saw for the early stage tech uh, activity that we saw through the pandemic? Well, it's been a reckoning for the last 18 months. I mean, basically uh, raising money for VCs, is the, the doors have been closed and, and the markets have been closed. So this is just a symptom of that. And this is the lagged effect of that. Um, but, you know, as you pointed out with, uh, with the rate hikes, uh, FTX was certainly a fraud. But these frauds come to bear when you have exogenous shocks in the stock, stock market that take down uh, kind of the covers. The, and you see the emperor has no clothes. So when you had the spike in rates, uh, what you saw was that these risk assets got, got pounded, namely crypto, namely no earning tech. And these are symptoms of that. So FTX uh, came out as a fraud. SVB is different. They had a treasury portfolio that had duration risk. 
And I think the Fed is going to take this very seriously. So you have to pay close attention to the knock on effects of certain activities and how they impact the financial system before writing them off completely. Well, let's talk about that, Tom. So we've got duration risk at Silicon Valley Bank, right? But at the same time, they had, one could argue, just proportionately short term pressure on their deposits because they have overweight lending uh, and exposure to young companies that are burning cash at very high rates at the moment. That's just, that's just one argument that's also out there. Let's, let's talk a little bit, Tom, about the metrics that you're watching going forward at this time of economic turbulence. You know, there's a lot of uncertainty. It's even more uncertain today than it was yesterday. But what are some of the things that you're keeping an eye on as we move into this next rate hike decision? Well, I, look, the economy is holding up. Um, the Fed has continued to raise rates, but what you're seeing is you've got a GDP, real GDP over 2%. You've got nominal GDP over 9%. And what we're finding out is the economy can handle these rate hikes. So whether they go three more 25 basis points or two more, you know, the inflation data will ha have an impact on that. I think the wage data was very important. But uh, all in all, the economy is holding up strong. Businesses are holding up strong. And as a matter of fact, Last week, you started to see both 2022, uh, 2023 and 2024 earnings start to slowly tick up just a hair. They had, been, they had been trending down for weeks and weeks and weeks, and now expectations are starting to trend up. So I think we need to keep an eye on that, that perhaps we're getting closer to the trough in earnings than we thought. And as you know, Anne, uh, the stock market bottoms historically six to nine months ahead of earnings bottoming. Uh, so that may put a firm footing on that October low. And uh, in terms of sectors that you're looking at, Tom, that you think are particularly attractive ahead of that, where are you guys looking to put your money right now? Uh, we like selective value tech, cash generative companies. Uh, take, for instance, Amazon. You can buy it at 2018 prices. The AWS and ads business has tripled since 2018. The uh, e-commerce business has doubled since 2018, and Prime members are up from 100 million to 163 million. But the most important thing to buy it at 2018 prices today, the operating cash flow is up 50%. So yes, they overexpanded during the pandemic. They are taking down those warehouses, but we think that's a great long-term opportunity. That's interesting, Tom. So let's just uh, focus in on Amazon, because I know that's a name that we talk about a lot here in the community. If, if you're saying you could buy it at 2018 prices, then you're buying for growth, but today you're buying that same value for, for cash. Is, is that what I'm hearing? You're buying it for the continued growth in AWS as we work through this slowdown in enterprise spending, which we may be nearing a trough within the next three to four months, and the market will start to discount that recovery beforehand. Uh, you're paying for them rationalizing the costs and you're paying for their continued business moat moving forward. So uh, they continue to increase their cash flow, they continue to increase their prime members, they continue to increase their business and their moat around the world. So we like it, it's down some 55% off the pandemic highs, at 2018 prices, but you're getting two or three times the business. Thank you very much there, Tom. Just some breaking.